Welcome back to Nick Lange's Comic Corner. Classic slash non-classic. This is episode number 228 and double shot number 161. First up, Col X-Men Colossus God's Country. This book collects the, the X-Men Origins Colossus one shot and, and material from Classic X-Men 5, number 5, 21, and 29. Marvel Comics Presents Volume 1, number 10 through 17. X-Men Limited Volume 1, number 29, and X-Men Limited number 14. This is simply just uh, Colossus sort of like solo stories. That's simply what this is, with the exception of his origin story, just kind of retold from, uh, well, it's just basically his origin story up until he makes his first like official appearance in Giant Size X number 1. But the whole God, the, the title of God's Country, that comes from the Marvel Comic Presents issues. But, but if you look at this trade, this is just a series of Colossus solo stories that Colossus solo, solo short stories that were collected over the course of a, I'd say t that came out over the course of a period of 10 years. I mean, you got parents of a character who I've never heard of before, who apparently is no friend of the rescue, despite the fact he's claiming that, uh, um, sorry about that, where Colossus' brother died and he had took taken care of him. Um, now, the writing in this issue is done by a bunch of variety. You have Chris Yost, Chris Claremont, Anna Senti, Kali Hammer, and Neil Keaton, with artwork by Trevor Hurstone, John Bolton, June Burke Bringman, Rick Lenardi, Kali Hammer, and Michael Avondimi. All right, here's some artwork, some sample artwork from the opening issue. The one thing you gotta notice though is that once you get the first part done, it's simply how artwork was drawn from the 80s and 90s uh, for simply the rest of the book. But these are a nice set of issues to read, and if you're if you're a fan of the character Colossus, I do recommend this. It's a very it's 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 well worth the $25 Marvel's charging for this. Well, I don't know why, though, because it's just filled with a one-shot and a bunch of short stories. But despite that, good book, 9 out of 10. Alright, next up is a book that I got for my birthday, and I figured, though, I read it. And since I read it, so I figured, though, why not review it here on here, since it'll be, like, the third Batman trade I own that I'm going to review on here. Batman Long Halloween, written by... The head of Marvel Television, Jeff Loeb. This is before we can hit Marvel Television, and the artist, Tim Sale. Here's some sample artwork. Now, one of some people's favorite... Now, the odd thing about this series is that Poison Ivy's got this strange-looking hair. Um, yeah, here's... Yeah, I don't know why Tim Sale gave her that hair for the spy fact she's known for your redhead. But, uh... For some people, uh, th there's this particular page in here of the Joker that people love. Uh, people love how Tim Sale draws. Here, here's a full splash page of the Joker. This is how Tim Sale draws the Joker. Now, there is a mystery in here about the series of gangster murders. Oh, and by the way, at the end, at the end of this particular series, this series is 13 issues long. And DC is selling this for $25. But this one is a little more worth it than uh, than the Colossus God's Country because this book is long. This book is thick. It feels like this book is about 200 pages long. And um, basically, they, this is sort of a second printing of this particular trade. And excuse me, it was released prior to uh, the premiere of Dark Knight Return. The sort of well. In a way, even though you have a quote here from Christopher Nolan, which, by the way, anybody who's ever seen the Christopher Nolan movies, the first two films, are heavily inspired by this 13-issue maxi series. Um, all I gotta say about this series is that it just is just pure awesome at its finest. I know some people, one person, I'm not gonna name names, I think the story is a bit overrated because it takes a while to get to particular point, but it's well worth it. It's 13 issues, and I'm not going to spoil who the holiday killer is, but I do recommend reading this book. But I, 
I, I, I do say this. There are a couple characters. Now, you do get a chance to see the origin of Two-Face in here. Um, and you get a chance to see the uh, death of that particular... of Sal Mariani, the, the character who create, who basically turned Harvey Dent into Two-Face, and death of, of Carmine Falcone. Now, Sal Mariani is killed by the Holiday Killer. Carmine Falcone is killed by Two-Face. And um, by the time this book is over... Um, pretty much most of the Falcons and m most of the gangsters that are appearing in this book are all dead, except for, uh, Falcone's daughter, um, and Falcone's sister. But there's one person who does survive, and I'm not going to who he, who he is. Yeah, it's a guy, and he's the holiday killer. And at the end of the book, he, she, uh, his cell, they put him in Arkham Asylum, and they put him in his cell across from the Calendar Man. Now, he is just there, just as a red herring. But, it's nice to see the guy. He's very creepy. Um, and here's something interesting. Though. He was put into Arkham Asylum by Harvey Dent. Yes. Because of how good this book is, I get this book a 9.5 out of 10. It's just really, really good. Alright. Stay tuned for the next episode, which should be episode 229. And double shot number 162. Until then, see you there. Bye.